All right. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good to have you here. Paul Tranny going to dive into the latest and uh, just waiting for the feed to load up. Good to have you here. So this is all about. There we are. Perfect. We're in business. Even though YouTube says I have an error, we are actually live. So let's get down to business, shall we? Shall we do this? We're going to dive into uh, our Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, which is all around uh, Photoshop summer reading program. We're going to be making book covers and uh, really translating some classics. So we'll learn about classic, some classic books. Uh, and as well as uh, pro tips in Photoshop. So it's going to be a lot of fun. You can see these books on either side of me. Content aware tools is what we're going to get into a lot today. So it's going to be pretty good and I'm excited about it. So let's just kind of uh, dive right in, shall we? And just so you know, hopefully you're joining me. If you're joining me elsewhere on um, you know, YouTube, hop over to Behance because essentially uh, this is the link that you want. It's right here. I'm going to paste that in as I share my desktop. It's this one right here. So it's good to have you here, Sean. Um, fantastic. Seems like you. I'm coming in loud and clear as well. So uh, let me know if I'm not. Okay. Annapolis. Uh, Annapolis, Maryland. Oh, yeah, awesome. Every day somebody kind of logs in and names a place that I've not been. And I'm like, oh, I should go there. So uh, awesome. Good to have you here, Ted. Welcome. And uh, this is the Daily Creative Challenge. If you scroll down here, it's all about portrait touch-ups. I'd like to start out with this one because it's the most requested thing that people do and probably the thing that's done the most is touching up photos, typically of themselves, of selfies, of friends, who knows what. That's what we're gonna do. We're actually gonna go from start to finish, from photograph to the end, uh, all using Photoshop. So this is, um, this is uh, this is going to be good. And thank you so much, Sean, for the confirmation on audio. So that's awesome. And Beverly, I see you over there. Muriel, awesome. So that's what you want to do. Portrait touch-up. Get, get the starting file. Get started right here. It's the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, right? Uh, so, uh, what was it? Rent? It's actually his only novel that he's written, but he's done tons of plays. It's kind of a big deal. Oscar Wilde is so fascinating, you know? Um, because it was basically, yeah, he, it's fascinating. Um, yeah, it's, it's just fascinating. I can kind of brief you a little bit about the book. Download this file, by the way. Here's this title art right here. Each one will come with title art. In fact, here's a sneak peek into the other books that we'll kind of tackle as well. Some you've heard of, some you, you might not have. Uh, but they're all going to be really good, and I think they're all fascinating. So, but starting with this file, Dorian Gray, of course, there's a painting uh, that an artist did of him. And then the artist gave him the painting. And uh, essentially, uh, this kid, who was very attractive, right, got corrupt uh, and did a lot of bad stuff. And all that stuff was reflected in the painting. And um, yeah, I don't want to give away the ending, but he remained young, but the painting got really old. So we're going to translate to that to a photo uh, that we take. We're going to make your, you look young and also old as well. Uh, yeah, Oscar Wilde was quite, uh, yeah, he was very quick-witted and was actually gotten troubled for being gay, actually. It was like illegal to be gay uh, in London and actually had to go to prison for being gay, which is fascinating. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a whole thing. So this is what I'm going to do right now. Uh, I, I do have a, a photo in here, but we're going to take a photo using Photoshop. Again, I like starting out here. It's something we can all do right over here import from iPhone or iPad, we're going to take a photo. Okay. So what do you do? You just have your device connected 
And if you, this is for Mac, but if you're on a PC, you will have a similar like import option. So take the picture and then import it. Works very similar. It's just a little bit more seamless on Mac. Uh, greetings to you from uh, Judith from Philadelphia. Good to have you here. So I'm gonna select take photo in Photoshop. Bam, right there. So it says take, go ahead and take a photo, Paul, right? Use your phone to take a photo. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I have it like so, let's flip it around. Like so, we'll just do like, uh, we'll just do something kind of like that. Like the dignified look. Let's use photo. And then here's this photo now on my desktop. Why so serious? I look so serious. Is that necessarily? Necessary. Well, I could always jump in and take another, just so you know, import from phone or iPad. By the way, I could also just as easily uh, use Photoshop on my iPad to do very much the same thing. All right, let's use this one. Here we are. And we're in it to win it. Good to have you here and welcome everyone, even over you, even you guys over there on YouTube. I see ya. All right. Uh, so here's again another photo, right? So this is so cool by the well way I'm gonna show you some new things if that works for you Anne and Sig. This is brand new by the way So check this out. I need to cut myself out Right, and this is really cool because Photoshop actually recognizes people right so it actually uh, for select subjects so I'll just use the object selection tool or quick selection tool you could start out there by selecting maybe an object or whatever the case may be like I'm doing right now this is the object selection tool right if there were more things in this scene I can select accordingly okay but uh, I don't really have to worry about doing these more manual processes my lasso tool right I could just have this selected and then I typically go right over here here we go let's go right over here up at the top when you have the selection tools selected you, we want to go into select subject right so right up here this is select subject clicking once no hands mode it selects me obviously I have this green screen behind me so I'm already ahead of the game uh, get it ahead of the game uh, let's go ahead and mask this out, click, and let's take a look at the mask that it made. And I don't really have like crazy frizzy hair, but if I did, it would cut out all the hair, like, and and keep it um, keep it all trimmed and nice and all that stuff, and like it would get all the green in between uh, the different strands of hair, right? So what this actually does, and let me show you the sort of the before. This is what it did previous to the latest update. Let's delete layer mask. I'll go up to select subject. You could force it to not recognize people by holding down the shift key. It just means it's like it doesn't care that there's hair on my head that I'm a person at all. Select subject. We'll do layer mask. Let's see what this layer masks. See how hard these edges are. And it's going to work different for you depending on your hair. But this is the uh, before. And then here is the, if I turn this one on really fast, wait for it. Uh, this is the after. It's going to get more of your hair because it recognize you, recognizes you as a person, as everybody should. Because you are a person, right? Uh, Okay, and Lucas, just to recap, all we did, we did file, we did import from iPhone or iPad. If you're on a PC, you're gonna have a, a still an import method, but it might not be as clean as this. It might launch your gallery, but that's how that works. All right, so with that done, there we are, right? We can start to take a look. First thing I noticed, there's a lot of contamination happening uh, around me. In fact, let's add a background. So I'm gonna add right down here, I'm gonna add a layer by clicking this plus sign, bam. There it is, here's this layer, nothing's on it, but I just wanna kinda of throw a gradient back there. So I'll open up my gradient panel and I'll just click a gradient. Any one I want, I'll make sure that is beneath uh, my previous layer and now you can see what you can get there. I could just do just like a nice gray, okay? Subtle gradient there, but that's how the layers work. If I have this gradient above, of course, it's gonna cover up everything, right? So I like to cover this fundamental since it's only day two. Uh, have you got a cheat sheet, Paul? No, I, I should probably give you a cheat sheet. You should really get a table of contents for this whole thing, right? It would seem to make sense. Okay, so um, check this out. I got this green, look at this. I guess it's not quite trying to... So I have this green halo, I wanna get rid of that. And by the way, when I did this select subject, 
it created this lovely mask over here, right? It says, hey, you know what? I'm gonna remove that background, which is great. Okay, we could refine this some more. If I happen to paint on it with black, with just a brush, right? It's gonna eliminate those, uh, it's gonna add to the mask and therefore you're not gonna see those pixels. Uh, is the selection accurate? The, the selection is so accurate, it's ridiculous. And I wish I could show you some other photo. Let's try this. Here we go. We want to see if that selection is accurate. Let's do it on this photo, right? So we'll, this is a, a case where I have not tested this out on this particular photo, but here's an extreme situation. We're going to go and we're going to hit select subject. No hand mode. Boom. There we are. Mask. Bam. Right? Let's take a look at that and look what it does, right? It grabs all of her hair so we don't have to, which is awesome, right? Uh, and again, if we did this previous, previous version, by the way, I'll force it to do the previous way, you would get this, right? Look at how hard edged that is. And the cool thing is, is you don't have to know that it does this magic. You just click the select subject, it'll select that subject, and then you can do what you want. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Let's move on. Uh, for this, we could always jump in and do additional cleanup. So we'll go to properties. Don't worry, we're going to get into t more touch ups, but we're going to go into select and mask. And that's usually in your properties panel. Select and mask. Right in here, I can use this refine edge. Looks like a hairbrush. Well, we kind of want to comb my hair a little bit. So let's just roll over the edges of my hair and I'll start selecting and removing that green. Right, it kind of selects in between there. So you can refine that all you want in select and mask. But here's the magic button that I love. Uh, hey, and Anthony, good to see you here, man. Decontaminate colors, because regardless of where you take a photo, chances are the background's not gonna be just a nice gray, but decontaminate colors, look at that. Uh, very subtle, but it removes the green from the edges, boom. Oh, feeling good, right? I could always go in and clean it up later, but this is the magic that's happened. It's this lovely mask. We'll actually keep that one as a background. Let's get rid of that. And here we are with this mask. All right, so let's do some uh, quick touch up. This always happens. I got like, you know, I'm having a, I have a really good lights, basically is what it comes down to. I don't know yeah what the situation is but chances are you're gonna have some some spots that'll go away in a you know in a week or so right we want to clean these up this, so this is where we get into the young dorian gray if you will so what do we do we go over here and i'm going to introduce you to a number of tools off to the side hey band-aid looks great let's use that band-aid spot healing brush tool right we can come in here any spots that you see you just want to go in and click on so click right there it samples from the surrounding areas. I want to get rid of that dot, boom, right there. It does it for me. Right down here, some spots on the nose. There's that like little pimple thing. That'll go away in a week. Let's just get rid of it like so. I have this scar, right? I'm not going to remove this scar because, uh, yeah, that's a permanent part of who I am. So I'm into it. But anywhere you have any issues, you just kind of scrub over like so, and it will eliminate it. You can use the brackets to increase or decrease the brush size, right, to be as accurate as you want. Okay. Uh, this also has modes, by the way. Yes, Mia knows what I'm going to do next. Camera Raw Filter does awesome smoothing. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be really fun. For this, we can get into darken and lighten. Let me show you the modes that you have. So we can go into, say, darken. Watch what happens when I go into darken. I'll make this really large. We'll click and drag over that. The darken makes it darker, so it gets rid, uh, rid of the shininess on my head, right? Again, if you want an area a little bit darker, just change it to darken, and it'll remove like it's doing right now. Again, I got really shiny... A shiny face, I guess. It's always like moisturized, just constant using rosehip oil uh, spritz all the time or whatever. You got these dark circles under your eyes. Try this. Change it to uh, lighten, right? So let's go in here. 
and we can drag over that and actually not with that big of a brush but I can lighten up those circles slightly uh, just by dragging over it like so. So use dark and use lighten. You ready for this? We are doing a number of things with only one tool, which is awesome. Uh, proximity match versus content aware. Proximity match, the answer is I actually do not know. I've tried them both and I don't know if it actually uh, shows me uh, much different. That's, uh, proximity match should do the same thing as content aware. So I'm gonna have to get back to you. I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know. I feel like an idiot. Let's go to screen, okay? I'm gonna show you screen now. It says content aware. Content aware will do a, a selection uh, from around the object, which is the same thing what proximity match says. Maybe Tim or someone can Google it for me. Okay, so right in here, we can go into screen. Watch what happens when I use screen, right, to the same photo. I'll just do these big drags. And actually, let's go ahead and duplicate this layer, right? And I'm just gonna kind of paint with screen. And what screen starts to do is really smooth out the skin, right? Let's actually, that actually looks pretty good. See, it's smoothing out the screen a lot, the skin a lot, right, in certain areas, right? It does it t almost too much, right? But I can go in and just do some exact smoothing for areas. Okay, I probably want to change this a little bit. It's a little much. Okay, which is why I duplicated the layer. So let's just kind of come in here. Let's just smooth this out. Again, it's a little extreme as I show you the results. Okay, let's go up here. Geez, it's like what? Do I not have pores? This is ridiculous. We could also use the patch tool. The patch will, will allow you to sample from another area but carol when it gets to that higher end stuff that you're mentioning yeah we can talk about it but we also want to use um uh camera raw okay so right over here this is why i duplicated this layer so this is the touch up up smoothing layer basically and this is just the touch up layer so i kind of smoothed out the skin right here so if i turn that off you could see how it's made it much smoother I could always make sure that's turned on and then just take down the opacity a little bit. Yes, oh, that's awesome. Neil, awesome. Studied at Darian Gray as part of your photography film class. That's fascinating. What's up, Mayan? You could always uh, start this from the beginning as well. So we've already made myself look, uh, made it look pretty smooth. Let's start with the original. So here's the original, and then we're back to uh, the cleaned up version, so. Before, sort of after, if you will. Uh, hello, Alexander. All right, so let's just do this. Let's just, let's just merge these two layers. All right, so this is the version that I want. I could talk about some of these other tools. Uh, kind of go into the clone stamp tool. We'll do something similar, but it's going to be like unaware of the... Um, brights and darks of the actual uh, stamp that it does. So this is indiscriminate. Like if I wanted a third eye on my forehead, I would come in here, I would sample right here by holding the option key, and then I'd click up here, and it's indiscriminate where it puts those pixels, right? That's what the clone stamp tool does. So you're gonna wanna use these healing tools instead. Healing brush, spot healing brush, the healing brush tool, you will sample from another area, okay, as well. So notice how it's kind of tracking it. Let me do the same thing right here with the healing brush tool, just to give you, uh, show you the difference. See how it matches the tone that I, the tone is being matched, and that is right over here, these content aware tools, healing brush. Patch will patch up an area, Right, again, gives you more of a selection mode. If I wanted to get rid of an eye, I can go in here, select it, right? And then sample from my forehead and make my eye disappear and it will do all of the blending and makes me look really weird, right? So that's the idea of these content aware tools. Okay, a lot of times I'll just use a selection tool and then I'll go into edit, Fill, I would just do a content aware fill. This is what I just kind of end up doing because it's more muscle memory than anything. But anywhere where you see content aware, it's going to be aware of the content around it and fill it in accordingly. Okay. 
All right, so let's move move on. I think I'm looking pretty good there. Let's take this to the next level. Let's convert this to a smart object. Okay, so now I'm gonna get into the high-end stuff. You ready for this? Uh, right in here, I'm gonna convert to a smart object. Like so. Here's my converted to a smart object. Let's go ahead and duplicate this layer so I just have a backup of it. Actually, I take that back. I'm gonna go to this original one. I'm gonna convert it to a smart object. Right, so this original, we're gonna clean this up now using camera raw filter right here. Okay, so camera raw filter, I'm gonna select camera raw filter since it's encased in this lovely smart object, it will protect all these pixels. What do I get to do now? I get to jump in here and uh, somebody might have mentioned it, but go in here to the texture. By the way, this is all um, pretty much reorganized. Go over here to basic, twirl this down, scroll down. You know how I was like stamping everywhere basically, um, using different tools. Well, check this out. I can just remove texture, right? Let's take that down. You can see it removes the texture from this photo, right? Gives it that crazy haze, right? So again, make it nice and smooth by dragging the texture like so, right? Clarity as well, if I drag that a little bit, this is what a horrible Photoshop user would might, might do. Don't do this. But I'm doing this to show that it actually does its best to keep the, uh, the sharpness of the objects while smoothing out these very much like pixels, right, as you can see. So what we could do is we could take that down. I'm gonna have some more fun with this, but by the way, let's do this. Let's clean me up here. Let's add an adjustment layer, a radial filter like so, adding a radial filter and I can increase the exposure just to brighten up the eyes. So this is one way of working as well, adding a radial filter and adjusting the exposure. So just taking that up, up a touch just to add some pop to the eyes, right? We'll click okay, there it is. Again, this is the camera raw version. But let's go crazy now. There's my camera raw version. Let's make me, because what happens to Dorian Gray? He takes on all the sins that Dorian commits. So that's why the painting looks horrible. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, we're gonna age me basically. We're gonna go into camera raw filter Go right over here. What do we do with texture if we take it the other way? Zoop. Oh yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah, let's just reveal all of those lovely details. And uh, yeah, that's what's happening at this point. And all we're doing is changing the clarity uh, and the texture, right? Take the exposure down, maybe have a little bit more contrast, playing with this a little bit, just to make me look really old is the goal for this one. Cool. Uh, how are we doing on time? Oh, we never have enough time. Clicking OK. There it is. That's kind of the start of me looking, uh, looking old. Let's just jump over to get rid of this one. going into this original file right here, and I'm just gonna drop this in right in here. I'm gonna take these two in there. We have our two camera raw files, dropping them into this file, like so, scaling it up. There we are. And now we can start to play with this a little bit, right? So again, clean version, uh, horrible version right? Keeping these two lined up. Have as much fun with this as you want. I could turn on this title. I can maybe uh, do an overlay with it, or I could do something like this. I can take this. You ready for this? I know we got lots of pro users. Let's do this. I could do a couple things here. I can split, say my eyes like so, like that. Actually, I don't want to do that yet. I'm running out of time is what it comes down to. But I'm gonna split it like that. I'm gonna make this selection and then right down here, I'm gonna add a layer mask. Boom, there we are. So now we have old eyes in front of very clean version of me. I'd probably adjust the levels a little bit just to make it match. But now we have sort of like old Paul. Hopefully you can see that. 
and then new Paul as I start to play with this whole idea of um, Dorian Gray book title, shall we? Again, there's the... There's the text. And by the way, if you want to get really fancy, that's why I've included these layers too. So really fast. Oh, I have one minute. Delete layer mask. You could use some of these wrinkles on other people, copying them, pasting them in, and then adjusting this to like a really fast, uh, a darker color anywhere within that first segment and dropping that into place. Let me open up some of these final ones just so you can see what they look like. Here's one version. I made, I just posted this to uh, Instagram today, sort of uh, young and old version. Let's take a look at this one as well. Here's another one, sort of in the final state, if you will, uh, old version of me uh, with some paint textures as well. Uh, let's go to this last one. Here's another one as well. Again, young version, old version, um, you get the idea. So hopefully you kind of get capture a vision for what you can do when it comes to editing photos, your own photos, as well as what to make, how to make them look worse. If we take a look at this one, since I have time, let's take a peek inside of this one. Here we are, we have all these fun wrinkles. What are they? Guess what? They are just different layers, right? Masked out like I showed you, and then maybe changed to luminosity in this case to make me look old. So you get the idea, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, post this to Discord. So that's where I'm gonna put it. Put it in the current challenge. That's where this is finally going to go. Uh, as I close this, ultimately, old version is gonna go there, so export that out and have fun. Thanks so much for watching, everybody.